on another epic episode of the Hyper Anomalous Esoteric Research Organization Podcast, broadcasting from spacewolfresearch.com, Base Camp. My name is Ryan, the Anomalous Ambassador of the Airwaves, bringing you some amazing topics to discuss today. But first and foremost, if you haven't been over to heroparanormal.com, you're missing out. There's a ton of content over there. Hop on over there, and for the price of a cup of coffee a month, you can access all that content. Also, if you want to support the podcast in other ways, we have a t-shirt. I think we're down to one t-shirt available, a Space Wolf Research official t-shirt at heroparanormal.com. Also, you can go to happinessmedical.com and purchase product there that helps the podcast, specifically Spice Natural Bronze. It's a amazing formulation. It's the first organic bronzing lotion that's hydrating with coconut oil and aloe vera infused for maximum hydration, 100% organic and natural. It will keep that dry, yucky skin completely hydrated and moisturized throughout the winter months while keeping that amazing color you got in the summer. There's nothing quite like it. It supports the podcast. It's invented by my wife, who's obviously the brains in the operation. No question there. But she did a great job on this one. Check it out. Tan like your life depends on it, because it does. Head on over to happinessmedical.com. Check out the product. And uh, there's also vitamins, minerals, and supplements over there available through Mother Earth Minerals, who we are an affiliate with. Oh, and possibly the most important, if you're listening to this via YouTube, do me the solid. Come on, like, share, and subscribe to the podcast. I will most likely never be monetized due to a variety of reasons, including the topics I cover and the truth. So if you like, share, and subscribe, it will help me break through the algorithm of control. The shadow ban is real. All right, let's get to it. We're going to attack this strange plane topic. I've been kind of putting this on the back burner for a while. I originally did delve in like everyone into what the heck happened with that woman who said that mf -er isn't real at the back of the plane when we started getting inklings of the high strangeness surrounding plane travel. And it's not just plane travel, it's also the planes themselves and some of the manufacturers, in fact... Boeing has had to ground all of its 737 MAX planes because they have all kinds of issues. Windows popping out of them, doors popping out of them. And Boeing is involved in a lot of things, guys. Um, they recently said they were going to expand their laser weapon system facilities in New Mexico. And this is a pretty interesting deal because... A lot of people didn't know that they were involved with mobile compact laser weapon systems. Now, it's exactly what you think it is. These are complete laser weapon systems to uh, basically address what they call small counter unmanned aerial vehicles or UAVs. But many have wondered if this includes UAPs. So Boeing is involved in a lot of stuff. They're, they're, they're really involved with intelligence, military contractors, and much, much more. So a lot of people have their eyes on Boeing because, yeah, these 737 MAX planes have some issues. And they're not just little issues. I'm going to go hard into the paint on this with the planes the plane manufacturers, the situations people are having on planes, and the high strangeness which is taking place on planes. B 
big time. We're going to dive into all of that. But before we do, some really interesting things coming out of, of course, Hollywood and our favorite celebrities. We have Kelly Clarkson, who is on a very interesting, uh, well, interview with Kevin Hart, where Kevin Hart actually tries to silence her. Many have been saying that this is not normal. Um, She's actually talking about how, you know, she has had many people in the past offer her millions and millions of dollars to do things she can't really go into. And as she starts discussing this, Kevin Hart tries to silence her, literally putting his finger up to her, up to his lips, telling her to, uh, shh, be quiet. And she straight up asks, you know, are you telling me to be quiet? And Kevin Hart says, yeah, these people are in the room. This is during an open dialogue where they should be able to talk about everything. But he says, don't talk about this. So it brings me to the possibility that there are elite throwing millions of dollars in the face of celebrities for them to do things they don't want to do. And some celebrities, obviously Kevin Hart is among the most wealthy comedians on the planet, if not the most wealthy. And he basically tried to shut down the dialogue. It was a little awkward. If you have a chance to check it out, um, it is uh, all over social circles right now. Kevin Hart silencing Kelly Clarkston when she starts to talk about, quite literally, the force behind the force in Hollywood. The Illuminati. Pretty wild stuff. And Hollywood's always got a smoking gun in both hands. So anyway, there's been a lot of interesting commentary revolving around Lil Nas X. He's a rapper who had a ton of satanic symbolism involved in everything he did. In fact, also very kind of... uh, What's the word? Gosh, he he sets himself up looking like Christ on the cross, being very provocative. Basically, he's out for that wow, you know, that wow factor. He does things to catch people off guard. He's into shock and awe, you know, dressed in scant, scantily boy shorts on the cross. He's been exposed in a lot of ways in the past. However, many have thought that he had a special agenda on point. Recently, he's saying he's gone completely Christian. Now a lot of people are attacking him. He said making Christian music does not mean I can't suck. I'll scratch the next word. But um, you get the idea. He's gone Christian, but not he, people are giving him a real hard time. So why are they giving him a hard time? Apparently, they're not acting very Christian-like because isn't the idea to allow people to better themselves. And in this case, he's leaving a life of darkness and at least getting better, you know, making Christian music. People are up in arms over this. I'll go on a little bit more into some of the commentary Lil Nas X has said. Here is his exact quote. Making Christian music does not mean I can't suck. No more. The two are not mutually exclusive. I am allowed to get on my knees for multiple reasons. So, I can see why some are up in arms, but at least the guy's bettering himself. And I think that at the moment, we should just say that he's bouncing back and forth, no pun intended, between Satanism and Christianity, probably for a rise to stay relevant, to stay important, and to stay at the top of his game. That's just my own personal belief at the moment but I don't think he should be attacked for making progress towards the light. Just my personal two cents there. Also, there's a bunch of people up in arms over all kinds of stuff. Specifically, Peter Ducey noticed someone hop off the chopper of the president. Of course, we're all familiar with Biden's chopper entrances. However, Peter Ducey noticed someone hop off the chopper who was not on the passenger list. It was Hunter Biden at the White House after defying the congressional subpoena. So people are up in arms over this, that he can defy a congressional subpoena and then ride unnoticed. Well, in this case, it was noticed, but spotted exiting Marine One at the White House. Marine One being the chopper. 
keep in mind that there is some legal stuff going on. He is, well, there should be a manifest showing who's on the chopper. It's an official travel log. He wasn't. He was spotted exiting Marine One at the White House. He had just defied a congressional subpoena. Now, keep in mind that Hunter Biden is facing some gun charges, which I believe have a maximum penalty of 25 years. And he's also facing some financial crimes. And he has a penalty of a maximum of 17 years for those. So not a good time to be, you know, catching a ride on Marine One in full view of journalists and reporters. But that's exactly what happened. Will he see any real consequence for his actions? Most likely not. But it is noteworthy that he was spotted riding on Marine One and not being on the manifest. And while on the whole political kick, uh, recently there was a big attack upon Donald Trump. About January 6th, he was on a interview and a journalist uh, asked him, a CNN reporter uh, asked him why he never told the folks January 6th to stand down trying to corner him in a town hall. But he actually had paperwork with him, live with receipts of actually doing exactly that via what was then Twitter, a very corrupt Twitter, I might add, as well as um, another website, both prior to the event and during um, the ordeal. He basically, yeah, pulled out these printed images, these receipts of his commentary on Twitter. Oddly, his commentary was taken down. So there was no record of him basically doing exactly that. And so now people are raging about the fact that this commentary was taken down by then Twitter. But let's face it, Twitter then was extremely corrupt, completely a tool of... uh shadowy government entities. So really interesting that, you know, he would be asked that question and very interesting that he just happened to have the paperwork with him and that he pulls it out on live television and pretty much destroys the CNN reporter. But CNN is losing a ton of viewership because of things like this. And it seems to continue. Not sure what to think of journalism these days and journalists, but I'll tell you what, one journalist that has totally come on board with what I've been saying for years is Tucker. Tucker Carlson is coming in saying he has information. He can't say where he got it. It's from intelligence circles, which is no shocker because Tucker was born into an intelligence family. He's from a very prominent family deeply entrenched in intelligence, but he's coming in heavy. He's coming in hot and he's basically saying, and I quote, they're not aliens. They've always been here. I do think it's spiritual if the United States government has in fact had contact with these beings and has entered into some sort of agreement with them. It's a very, very heavy thing. And I think that's exactly what, you know, I have always purported, and so it's nice to see major mainstream proponents like Tucker, who even though he was, you know, ousted by mainstream journalism, I would say that Tucker has actually grown in popularity since. He's become very popular, and he's come on board, you know, with this heavy disclosure, in my opinion, that these entities are not aliens. We may call them that, but they are not what people typically believe aliens are and that the, they are spiritual and that there could be some joint ops taking place. Good stuff coming out of the Tucker Carlson camp lately. Pretty epic. And speaking of epic, the sightings just keep coming, both in the Uinta Basin of Utah, around Shapeshifter Territory and SpaceWolfResearch.com and 
in just about every other state as well. The southwestern United States is especially hot recently, and I've been getting a lot of people mentioning sightings, sending me video evidence, physical evidence of lights in the skies, and some of them are quite uh, established individuals in their communities, and they don't always want their information out there. Um, I just came across one today, great guy, talked to him on the phone for a while. He had an amazing sighting, and I want to go into a little bit of it. Again, he is a very respected uh, individual in the community, does not want to come out with his name, so I'm going to not mention his name, but he did say I can share this with people, so check out this recent convo. Oh, wow. Let me ask you this. Would you be okay if I documented this and recorded it just to put it and possibly share it with others? Sure. Okay. Give me one sec. Okay. Go, go right ahead. Yeah. I looked out my bedroom window at 4 a.m. to see how much snow we got. Not much, but I noticed lights moving in the sky straight to the east. I live, oh, maybe a mile south of the center of Roosevelt, just to the west of Centennial Elementary School. Saw lights moving in the sky, and went, ooh, so I picked up my binoculars and looked. And there were little lights floating around about 10 degrees above the horizon, straight to the east. And this was this Wednesday? 4 a.m. Oh, okay, okay, I'm just making sure, okay. And there were lots of little lights moving around. I mean, a bunch of them. Uh, the only way I can describe it is a swarm. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm looking at those things thinking, <clears throat> the only rational explanation would be 30 or 40 guys with drones right? Mm -hmm. With lights, lights on them. And I looked at them and looked at it. I watched these things for an hour straight. Uh, about 4.30, I woke up my wife. Honey, get out of bed. Come look at some UFOs. She came in and picked up a pair of binoculars and looked and saw immediately five or six of them. They went on for, I think the last time I looked and saw one was when the sky was getting light about 6 a.m. And they were still flying around. And I studied them. I got like three pair of binoculars, 10 power, 15 power, 20 power. And the 10 power was best because it had a wider field of view and I could see more of them at one time tried to figure out some kind of pattern, some kind of, you know, what are they doing? And mostly they were flying uh, north and south, back and forth. And about every minute or two, one of them would leave the formation and go either north or south. I could only follow them for short ways. Mm -hmm. uh, if they went to the north, because, you know, we just had a snowstorm and there were still clouds, including a lot of low clouds. And if they went to the north, I could only watch them for maybe 10, 15 seconds, heading up toward White Rocks, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, there was an especially bright one that I followed <clears throat> that went south. And I was able to follow it as it went down toward Oray or maybe Bonanza Power Plant direction for close to almost a minute. So these were covering yeah. some serious ground. Yeah. Yeah, they were. And, you know, just, just to be clear, during the hour that I watched them, I also saw three commercial aircraft fly over to compare for, you know, speed and altitude. And I also saw two satellites come over. And, you know, I can tell satellites, and I can tell commercial aircraft. 
Uh, these were neither. And the one thing that really made it clear to me that <clears throat> these were <clears throat> nothing that we could produce on Earth was the immediate change of direction. I watched one particularly bright one who was heading toward the south, and <clears throat> it made an altitude change of about one radial degree. It dropped down and then continued south, but at the change of direction, there was no pause in velocity, and it was a square corner. There was no radius on the corner of the turn. Wow. So it was like literally yeah. just stop and go. Or no pause at all. Yeah. Just kept going. No no pause at all. Just horizontal to vertical, back to horizontal. And, you know, we're capable of defying gravity. All it takes is an engine and fuel. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to momentum and inertia, we can't control that. Now, so did, when, you said you saw a few commercial aircraft. Did they act any differently when those commercial aircraft came through? No. Okay. No. Just cruising on their flight plan. So this was, and <clears throat> as near as I can think, it, and it's hard to count a whole bunch of little points of light in the sky when they're all moving. And I would guesstimate probably 40 of them unbelievable and i i read a lot of ufo reports i pay attention to them i read books and 99 well a hundred percent of them are just one for a short period of time or up to five or six for a short period of time and this was a bunch of them for two hours. You know, I watched them off and on pretty constantly from 4 a.m. until 5 a.m. and decided I need to get some sleep. And I laid down, tried to go to sleep, and couldn't. I uh, got up at 6 a.m., and the sky was turning bright in the east, washing out all the low-altitude stuff, looked up a little higher, maybe 30 degrees up, and damned if they weren't still flying around. So Unbelievable. That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I. What is that number? UFOs, what's their purpose? That's the thing, the purpose and, and intent. You know, what are they up to if there's that many of them? Yeah. It was shocking to me. You know, I this, this is now the fourth experience I've had in my life. That's pretty cool. The, the first experience was when I was a Boy Scout in West Virginia. And I was coming home from a scout meeting and walking up the hill to the house, and it was up. No moon, dark sky, brilliant stars. And as I'm walking up toward the house, I look up and I see this one star that's moving in a very strange way. And it's doing right angle turn grid pattern in the sky. And I laid down on the lawn, and I watched that sucker for five or six minutes trying to decide what the heck could it possibly be. And, you know, this is, this is before the era of helicopters. Yeah, we had, we had some small helicopters, you know, in, in MASH, right? But they weren't, there weren't many around. And uh, this thing was moving in a right angle grid pattern. And I never figured out exactly what the pattern was, except it would move a certain distance and then immediately beginning, begin moving right angles to that. You know, like I saw this one Wednesday morning, right angle turns. So that was my first experience. That was what, 50 years ago? Mm-hmm. Never was able to explain it. So, and let's see, what did I, oh, 
the one really close encounter I had was in the 80s. Uh, I was a wedding photographer coming back from Vernal using the back road from Mazer to La Pointe. And I noticed up ahead of me, off the side of the road, there's a very peculiar pattern of lights moving along rather slowly. And I caught up with it, and I looked at it, and I thought, this is weird. So I sped up and got quite a ways ahead of it. It was doing 40 miles an hour. Got ahead of it. And I stopped the car, shut off the engine, shut off the lights, got out of the car to make sure it wasn't reflections off my windows or something. And I watched this thing come by and got a really good look at it. 40 miles an hour, low altitude, no sound. And if you know what a 59 Cadillac rear end looks like, Mm -hmm. you remember those? Yeah, I have a 69. I wish I had a 59. Well, they had the two bullet taillights up on the fins, right? Yeah. Okay, it had these these two pairs of red lights on the right and left side, and then a, a, a normal white bar of white light below those. And in the middle on the bottom where the license plate would have been was this large rectangle of blue-white light just like you see on Star Trek when they go into was it, warp drive. And, and it just cruised on with absolutely not a sound. So how many aircraft can we produce that can stay aloft at 40 miles an hour and not make a sound? Unbelievable. Yeah. That's interesting. That is interesting. Yeah, that's, you know, it's neat that you're in the basin because there's so much going on there so often. Yep. Very cool. Well, that's amazing. Yeah, I'm, I'm always, I, 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 I'm always blown away sometimes at how these things move and what they're up to. And it, it seems like the longer I'm in this, the less I know. It just seems like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's wild. Have, have you studied the, the Skinwalker Ranch stories? Oh, absolutely. You bet. So you kn- did you ever meet the Shermans? You know, um, I have gotten in close proximity, but never talked to them. Yeah, they don't want to talk to you. No. They were scared shitless. So they, they got out and moved away. Some of the stories that they could tell you would really frighten you. I believe it. I believe it. Yeah. Uh, Let's let's see. At at two particular times, Mr. Sherman saw an opening a portal into another dimension. Wow. You know, where, where the ranch sits down in this flat and just to the north are these uh, sandstone cliffs, mm-hmm. the hills. With the, <clears throat> he said on two different occasions he saw a portal open up where those hills would be, and inside those portals he could see another world. He could see branches of trees and weeds, and the wind moving the leaves, and then this individual, this entity, would come out of this little hole and hop down onto the rocks and run away. That's yeah. enough. That's that, that would that would prove it, right? Uh, well, all you got to do is have film of it, huh? Yeah. So, anyhow, I just thought you might, you know, I, I was... I was so impressed with what I saw Wednesday morning. I actually called 911. Says anybody reporting seeing lights in the sky? And 911 got onto the Uinta County deputy who was, you know, on duty that night, and I told him about it. But you know, what, what are you going to do? Some nutcase talking about UFOs? 
Right. Well, gosh, anymore, you know, I everyone used to think I was a nutcase, and anymore, it's kind of come full circle. Now people are telling me stuff all the time that's going on, and, you know, I own a little property kind of the opposite side of the ranch um, over there on the south side. I share a fence line on the south side with them, and uh, it's just a little property called Space Wolf Research, and that's why I bought it, just so I could have a place to look and not get chased off, not get run off, because there's there's so much going on. Yep. Yeah, it's it's hard to imagine that the governments are still covering it up. I don't, you know, well, what if they did release information? Yeah, there are other beings from other dimensions and other galaxies and, you know, it might cause panic. I don't know. But so many people have seen so much. <laughs> it boggles my mind. It There's a lot. There's a lot there. There's a lot there. We'll have to talk more about it. And I just want to double check with you. If it's okay if I don't share your name, is it okay if I share this with others? Absolutely. Okay. So stuff is still as weird as ever in the skies with unidentified aerial phenomenon. But what about the planes? There's planes all over the place that have unruly passengers that are claiming unbelievable things. And while it started with Tiffany Gomez saying that M effer at the back of the plane isn't real, that definitely got everybody's attention. There's been a lot that's happened before and since then. Interestingly enough, Some of the strangest ones have not happened in this country. One of my, well, I don't want to say favorites because these are all horrific events, but one of the most interesting is an Asian man on a flight who said he was in some type of time loop where he kept having to take the same flight over and over and over again. And he was actually thankful. He lost his nuggets. He went crazy, but he was actually thankful that they took him off the plane and took him to the psych ward because, hey, mission accomplished. He just wanted the time loop to stop. Another wild one that just came out is a man was actually found dead in an in airplane engine. And these things get are getting more and more out of control. Let's stick to the Boeing 737 MAX and what's going on with that. Just for a bit, because it, it's enough to uh, really sink our teeth into. The Boeing 737 MAX is a fourth generation of the Boeing 737. And everybody knows that the 737 is extremely well known for being an awesome plane. It's a narrow body airliner and it's been manufactured for quite some time. It succeeds at doing almost everything it's supposed to do. But this new fourth generation of the 737 has some issues it um it's had windows come out it's had doors open up and nobody really trusts this particular plane it seems to be dangerous and the conspiracy doesn't stop there as many know we mentioned that january 6th has a bad bad connotation when it comes to dates because of stuff that happened in our capital. Interestingly, the FAA grounded the 737 MAX 9 fleet on January 6th. Interesting timing. Now, the main reason they grounded them is the day before, a panel blew off an Alaska Airlines flight. The panel was basically big, really big as big as an emergency exit, as big as a refrigerator. Now, that is a horrifically large gaping hole in an aircraft flying at extreme speed. Luckily, for all the passengers, they had gotten high enough that they, they basically all had their, their seatbelts on. And that's why, you know, th- it's a good idea to keep your seatbelt on, I guess, in case the emergency door opens, something I've never thought could happen. But this is something that took place. But the Boeing 737 has had a lot of issues. 
And going back through the years, we can we can find some of those issues pretty quickly. Uh, before the depressurization of the one that blew the panel out, the size of the emergency door, another 737 MAX lost some bolts in a rudder control system. Before that, Boeing reported a defect in the aft pressure bulkhead assembled by Spirit. Nothing wrong came of it, but something to note. Now, before that, back in December 19th, 2022, Congress clears the way for the MAX 7 and the MAX 10 to basically come to market despite outdated crew alert systems. Prior to that, September 22nd, 2022, Boeing and other U.S. regulators reached a $244 million settlement in deadly MAX crashes. And those crashes are coming up. But before we get to the crashes, in a report to Congress, seven whistleblowers alleged fundamental problems with safety oversight having to do with these planes. Back in April 9th, 2021, an electrical flaw grounded more than 60 of these Boeing Maxes. December 21, 2020, Congress passes a sweeping overhaul of the FAA meant to improve oversight. And to be honest, it kind of had to do with Boeing particularly. Okay, then we have the Lion Air crash back in 2018 which was faulted by the design and certification of the planes. In March 10th, 2019, a 737 MAX 8 operated by Ethiopian Airlines crashes and kills 157 people on board. Everyone. So is there something wrong with this plane or is it just unlucky? It honestly seems like a little bit of both. But we're having all kinds of high strangeness take place, not only with the planes themselves, but passengers on board. We have examples of this over and over again. A woman pees on a plane floor. This was caught on camera. We have the woman freaking out on the plane because she says that the plane's going down and that somebody on the plane is not human. And we have a very famous boxer and fighter who loses it on a plane. We also have a very famous soccer player who loses it on a plane. And I mean, we're talking where they have to be subdued and removed from the plane. And all of these things would enter into the realm of high strangeness because the claims they're making are out of this world. In Japan, we have video of one plane colliding with a Coast Guard plane. We have a man who claims he is demon-possessed on a plane and practically, you know, just takes the whole plane by storm. And last but definitely not least, we have a UFO that is spotted hovering over Air Force One in L.A. and following Biden's plane. So... This was important enough that uh, everybody took notice. It made national news. These things are taking place. And 2024 has turned out to be crazy for planes. Not that 2023 wasn't. But technically, I was just looking at some calculations. And I guess we aren't technically. This is going to sound crazy. According to some of the alchemical processing and the works that... Basically, the public has been duped into believing that our year is what they tell us. But apparently, the year starts January 10th is what I was looking at and looking into. I'm not buying it hook, line, and sinker. But if this is the case, this is very, very interesting. Having to do with the Gregorian calendar... And New Year's, it, there's there's most solar calendars begin the year regularly. Anyway, it, it's a it's a whole thing. Um, January 10th is also when Thomas Paine published Common Sense. 
It's also uh, the League of Nations Day, January 10th. And go figure, five days after that is when Davos is taking place. That's January 15th. That is, of course, the World Economic Forum starts in Davos, January 15th. So close proximity for sure. It's been rumored that Davos is sort of a uh, black swan event, if you want to call it that. And of course, we kicked off the actual new year, January 1st, with nothing short of spectacle and psyops of Miami 10-foot-tall aliens in a mall. Now, the reason I say it's a psyop is too much is just too weird about this. This is a scenario where pretty much every officer in Miami shows up to this mall because kids are purportedly having these brawls with sticks and fireworks. Now, interestingly, some of the eyewitness accounts have been recanted, basically people saying that they were doing it just to get clicks and likes on their social media and other channels. In addition to that, there's some strange occurrences having to do with the actual media. In something that can only be called too coincidental. And that is, if you've seen Stranger Things and you see how it ends, they're basically fighting this massive alien in the mall with fireworks, you know, fireworks. Um, If you haven't seen Stranger Things, that's okay. But there is that predictive programming, if that's the case. Stranger Things kind of goes there, you know. It also talks about nerdy kids, according to some of the eyewitness accounts in the Miami Mall incident. Nerdy kids that were doing something with like a black box there, and it reminds me of the Hellfire Club. Again, back to Stranger Things. And it's strange that this is how we'd kick off the new year. Keep in mind that the police force was ready for just about anything. And um, when they heard the fireworks, some people thought it was actually gunshots. I guess others actually did pull their guns. It's just a big cluster. Nobody knows what exactly happened. But if you watch Stranger Things and watch how that all ends in a mall, fighting an alien with fireworks, this seems very coincidentally similar. And, I mean, everybody's ran with this story. Everybody has gone all over the place with this story. So it's everywhere. Just like a psyop should be. You know, with these political psyops or whatever you want to call them, the, the, politi- the, the, the politics are important too. There's a lot of political factors that come into play. But with these psyops, if it seems too good to be true, it usually is. And I recently heard that, speaking of politicians, there's a lot going on uh, just, just now, um, obviously, Vivek Ramaswamy stepped down from the GOP running and backed President Trump. He's in the number one position. Who would have figured, right? And interestingly, uh, politics are strange. Politics are strange. I was just doing the math about Pelosi. This is Pelosi politics. And that is the fact that she's never made more than $179,000 a year, according to social media. And um, apparently, she's worth $120 million. So, basically, she's worth one-eighth of $1 billion. And the math on that just doesn't make sense. She would have to have been in the Senate 3,367 years. Which, if you do that math, it's technically impossible. So you have to ask what's going on behind the scenes. And that's how it is, not just in politics, but also in the psyops. Now, sometimes the psyops and the politics merge. And you can't tell where the line is. In fact, it's getting grayer and grayer. In fact, in a recent slip or leak or notice, I guess, I I noticed that Obama slips during a talk and he starts off kind of uh, talking about a global reality, but how and then it turns into, 
You know, is he talking about us? Is he talking about the dystopian future of the United States of America? And it seems as if he is. And I will go ahead and play this slip, in my opinion. But yeah, he's he's basically talking about something similar to what's symbolically significant in Leave the World Behind. But this isn't a real world speech that he made where he kind of slips. He slips kind of letting the cat out of the bag. Check it out. And, and just pump out propaganda and, and put dissidents and reporters in jail. Countries where it really doesn't matter who you vote for because the fix really is in. And people in power do whatever they want. And where corruption is rampant because there's no accountability. When that happens, people get hurt. I think what stands out the most is the part about when people in power do whatever they want. And then he goes on to say, that's when people get hurt. And it makes you wonder, but some are calling it a slip. Others are calling it just, you know, rhetoric. As I've said before, I think that Barack Obama is the finest Manchurian candidate we've ever had. And also, regardless of my personal political views about him, I think he's the best orator and the best speaker this country has ever had. Very well groomed. And, um... Anyway, it's very likely that he is a part of a working group of elites who have done nothing but show us these amazing trained puppets that I believe the superclass and power elite have full and total control over, and the tail wags the dog. Of course, that's just my personal belief. I'm, I'm maybe a little opinionated as I research some of this stuff. But I don't think you get to those heights, regardless of who you are, without stepping on a few toes. And doing so, not necessarily under your own fruition, but the fruition of those who support your political campaigns, the corporations, which have all kinds of influence, and the many lobbyists who have tons of pull. And I'm reminded of Richard Nixon, who went to the Bohemian Grove, and he later said that it was very influential, and if not, possibly the main reason why he was elected president. That is, of course, before he said it was one of the shadiest places he'd ever been. But that's another story. So apparently, if you know the right people, you can get to the right places. Shocker. And I think the same is true of many in politics. And speaking of Bohemian Grove, Hero Paranormal Podcast is getting a shipment, get this, of a, uh, don't ask, official Bohemian Grove hats, which I am then going to add a patch that says Hero Paranormal on. Um, haven't got them yet, so let's not, let's not count our chickens before they hatch, but I hope I can still get this shipment of official Bohemian Grove hats, which I can then put a hero paranormal patch on could be a little bit fun. And uh, yeah, let's again, let's wait till they actually show up in the mail. I've had promises and offers, but let's see if it actually comes through. There's an insider that might be hooking us up. But uh, yeah, this is kind of what we're talking about is these, these places that have royal bloodlines, political elite, super class, and they they make decisions. They bring people to power quickly. And it, the same is true of Bill Clinton. When he was a young Bill Clinton, before he was embroiled in all of these scandals, he was very much similar to the young Barack Obama, where everybody kind of said like, yo, wow, look at this guy, young gun. He's going to, he's going all the way to the top. And also was in circles that have influence and power. Among those, he was a Rhodes Scholar. And the, he's he's a very bright individual for those that make fun of his accent. Again, I, I'm not in line with his politics, but a very intelligent and apt pupil for the superclass power elite and corporations who ushered him to the top post in the land, albeit through lobbying, funding. There's a variety of different things that come into play when you're running a presidential campaign, but everything worked very smoothly for all these individuals. But we have to be aware that sometimes they may be groomed for these positions. They may be, 
you know, young, young men and already being groomed for the presidential position, much like Gavin Newsom. And, uh, man, there's so much to unpack with the Gavin Newsom stuff. We better leave that for another time. People have been posting a lot that he's akin to an American psycho, not only in his activities, but, you know, his appearance. And the people that he hangs with have been you know, quite literally grooming him for some time, including the Gettys, the very wealthy billionaire family. He gets uh, the majority of his funding from Silicon Valley elite and the Gettys. Like I said, that's an entirely different podcast, which we can go into another time. And we've got a bunch of bangers coming, a bunch of podcasts coming in a row. Bing, bang, boom. Um, Later today, there is the patron only kosher sex tunnels podcast. You don't want to miss that. And later tonight, I'm on a podcast with Lala Bright, James Keenan, and that's going into Uinta Basin High Strangeness uh, and the Blind Frog Ranch. And then tomorrow, I will be on a Quantum Guides panel with Karen Holton. She is just the best. And that one is going to be amazing. So um, don't miss that one. Lots, lots coming, lots out there, but let's stick to what we've got in front of us. What's before us is for us, and there is a ton before us. So what's cracking? Well, we have the comedian Eddie Griffin, who continually has posts removed. He came out with an amazing set about how the pyramids were built and drops some serious knowledge every time I download the video or the reel or whatever it is about the pyramids and comedian Eddie Griffin explaining it, it gets pulled down. I'm sure that we can find this somewhere where it's for purchase, but it's a pretty good thing. And it's funny how a lot of these comedians know more than you would expect. Is it because they are brushing shoulders with many of the heads and leadership of the cabal? Some some say they are. And uh, I know that there's been a lot of talk here in recent months about some of the pedo scandals in Hollywood and a lot of Hollywood celebrities wanting to move out of Hollywood, LA, California in general, and they're moving to Nevada. This is something that is very real. It is spearheaded for the most part by Mark Wahlberg, who uh, recently bought, I believe, the most expensive tract of land and home in Nevada. And not only that, he is establishing an entire studio set, studios, and intriguing and urging Hollywood celebrities who are on the same path to move out to Las Vegas, Nevada. I mean, really, Las Vegas, Nevada makes sense as being the new Hollywood, especially if you're trying to leave that whole pedo uh, stuff behind. Unofficially, there have been many reports of Mark Wahlberg claiming that he's been to events or invited to events where he sees stuff start to go south and he gets the heck out of there. As many are familiar with and aware, Mark Wahlberg is a devout Christian. He is Catholic and he is kind of done playing with anybody that is messing around in those circles and has said so in the past. That's why he wanted to move his family somewhere obviously away from Hollywood and its distractions, its temptations, and some of the more evil aspects that Hollywood has been known for. Las Vegas, Nevada makes all the sense in the world for celebrities and for filming. He recently came out with a movie called The Family Plan, which is extremely entertaining. I believe it's on Netflix. I could be wrong. Check it out. He he knocks it out of the park. He's an amazing actor, a devout Catholic. And he's bringing folks over. I mean, they're coming here. There's not, he's not the only one. I believe Mario Lopez, also here in Las Vegas, Nevada. And Nevada just makes sense. Not only does it have tax benefits, but it also has a lot more to offer than Hollywood ever did. And by that, I mean, it's got the entire Las Vegas Strip. It's got, uh, you know, anyway, I could go on and on, you know, when it comes to the glitz, the glamour and everything you need to make celebrities happy, Vegas has it. And it is an international destination. Not that Hollywood isn't, 
But Hollywood, in my opinion, has become sort of that old cesspool of like the creepy elite class. And, you know, the the homes are older, they're 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 just not they're just not, I don't know. Of course they have beautiful homes, don't get me wrong, but I don't know, it just lacks that vibrancy that I think, you know, Vegas is always kind of the city of what's happening now. Everything's always changing, moving forward, higher vibrational factor. And yeah, it looks, I'm not just saying that because I bounce back and forth between the Uinta Basin and Las Vegas, Nevada, but I love Vegas. And there's a lot there for just about everybody. So let's see if the Hollywood elite at least the the ones that want to, right? The ones that don't want any part of the stuff that we have kind of discussed, if they are actually going to be merging into Las Vegas. There's a lot of uh, reality here. I mean, we have massive building projects taking place. And in a lot of articles, they are discussing Vegas as the new Hollywood. And why would that be? It's not just the money aspect, but I think there's more to it. Mark Wahlberg, he calls it Hollywood 2.0. And he basically knows as well as any parent that it's hard to raise kids. But he's chosen to bring his to Las Vegas. And I, I think that, you know, in real life, the family plan, something you need to definitely check out. But um, they, they filmed much of the movie in Mark Wahlberg's new hometown of Las Vegas, right where you would expect, and where he is creating a Hollywood 2.0 with tax credits. There is also more affordable housing, better quality of life for crews. Uh, their dollar goes further. There's going to be a studio. And I quote, he said the following, People know how serious we are, but you can't put the carriage before the horse. There are tons of talented people here, but also to attract new people, you have to make sure that there is a guarantee you work for X amount of time. And the state wants to make sure that if you're giving up the tax credit, the people are going to come. He also added, we're getting close. I think they're very excited to create a new industry outside of gaming. And I'd have to agree. Las Vegas is all about creating new industries and hopefully we end up with a place that has all the glitz, all the glamours, and all of the fresh celebrities who are leaving the old, rusty, dusty, musty, creepy, I might add, Hollywood class behind. We'll see. That's uh, Mark Wahlberg's vision, and I see it. I can see it. You know, a lot of people thought he was crazy when he first ta started talking about this, but this is a guy that gets things done. He's somebody that when he puts his mind to something, he gets it done. And I appreciate the fact that he's a family man. I appreciate the fact that his most recent movie is actually called The Family Plan. Kind of a, you know, you see the symbolism there. And also appreciate the fact that, you know, he is very spiritual and seems to be guided by the light. So we'll have to see how this all plays out. My money, if I was to bet, I'd be betting on Mark Wahlberg on this one. And Hollywood 2.0 might be something we see very soon. Now, it's not just planes, as I mentioned earlier, that are strange in what's coming across in the media. You have to remember that in East Palestine, Ohio, there was that massive train derailment. Keep in mind the word Palestine and train derailment. We now have a major derailment in the political setup over in Gaza next to Israel in quote-unquote Palestine. And Netflix came out with a movie called White Noise. So predictive programming much? Yeah. Now, speaking of cool cats in Hollywood, Jack Osborne, uh, son of Ozzy Osborne, has recently come forward and talked about how he believes he may have some attachments. We've called them different things in different podcasts. You know, uh, Jack Osborne has gone to the Uinta Basin of Utah many times. He's been in and around the area uh, known as Shapeshifter Territory. We all know about many haunted ranches. 
which have the characteristics which have been described as hitchhikers. Basically, these entities that can attach themselves to you and come home with you no matter how far away you live. Well, Jack Osborne has come forward and said that he believes he may have some attachments. In fact, he has seen, and his wife, I might add, have seen these cloaked figures in his home. I mean, these are pretty serious, you know, attachments. And, you know, it's shocking to many, but having been, you know, in the Uinta Basin for quite some time, since 2007 nonstop, and then, you know, having purchased SpaceWolfResearch.com, the base camp, uh, which shares a fence line with the old Bigelow Ranch, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, these don't shock me. I've come to just kind of accept these things as being part of, you know, the deal. If you get involved in this particular game, the game of interacting with these non-human intelligences that are roaming the area with reckless abandon, and Jack has done that many, many times. Not to mention, Jack Osborne goes all over the world uh, chasing, you know, spirits, ghouls, goblins, cryptozoological creatures, entities, shapeshifters. The guy is genuinely... And I add, I mean, because there's a lot of in, in these circles that are not genuine. They're just out, you know, to get money, to make a show. But I can verify that Jack Osborne is genuinely interested in the paranormal, enticed and intrigued by high strangeness, and doing his best to get answers many times at his own detriment. You know, he's he's fearless, and he's very interested in this. He's He's a very real paranormal researcher. So I thought that was really interesting that he came out and said he believes he may have attachments. His wife was in bed and looked over and saw a hooded figure next to the bed. And then, you know, he heard about it and thought, oh, you know, she's just seeing things. And then he saw the same thing. So that's pretty serious. A hooded figure next to the bed. He's seen some other things as well. And um, we may have to attack that another time because he's he's a very cool cat and he wouldn't lie about these things. And he's the real deal. So apparently there is something to having attachments and bringing things home. The AKA hitchhiker effect is a real thing. Also, keep in mind that when Jack Osborne was near uh, in, in filming there in the area of shapeshifter territory, uh, right on Skinwalker Ridge. I was there with him. I saw it. He started complaining about one of his eyes. He was losing sight in one of his eyes. This is the first time he had any symptom whatsoever of what would later be revealed to us as being MS. And yeah, this this is this stuff happens. There are physical aspects and physical consequences sometimes to being at the heart of some of these investigations. There's other people I've known who have contracted very, very serious physical ailments, you know, in the same proximity. Namely, uh, Daryl Smith, a very close friend of mine, he contracted ALS, which is known as Lou Gehrig's disease, after a interesting investigation where myself, another investigator named Ron Johnson, and uh, anyway, we were on a property, and needless to say, we encountered something akin to what would be called a man in black, um, you know, a, a, a government spook type individual who was witnessing what we were up to through night vision goggles, proceeded to pull out some, so it looked like a super soaker, I, I don't know what else to call it, we had our own night vision technologies and got a good look at this thing, and this particular weapon, for lack of a better word, that this gentleman pulled out of the back of uh, this gear, his gear, was what appeared to be a super soaker, aimed it in our direction, and when he fired it, I, I need to note this, Ron Johnson and myself ducked down behind a barrier that was there. However, Daryl Smith uh, continued looking through his night vision technology as well as we did, but he stayed standing and what we saw when this MIB, for lack of a better word, pulled the trigger was something that looked like frequency, like waves, like plasma waves. 
almost, you know, out of the end of this thing in our direction. I can only assume that it hit Daryl, and this was shortly before he started having consequences, physical ailments, trouble walking, and quickly, you know, uh, fell into the hideous throes of that disease, that ailment known as ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease. So I've seen this happen time and time again. It's a very real thing. I've encountered this myself on a particular expedition. I went out to the area with another researcher um, and we were investigating a cattle mutilation. Um, it, the other the other researcher was Rick Williams. We got right up on the cow and I remember that the foot that was closest to the dead animal, I didn't think anything of it, but when I got home, I noticed that I started losing sensation, feeling, etc. in that leg. And it, it was so much, in fact, that I couldn't walk. And uh, to make things weirder, a lot weirder, I, I went to my doctor and he said that this was neurological, that this was some form of neuropathy, possibly due to radiation, etc. Anyway, I reached out to a variety of people. Um, people that many of you know, who are very well known in the field, they told me what to do, uh, among many different things, light therapies, mixed martial arts exercises, and, uh, some other pretty high tech stuff. I got full feeling of the leg back, but the point is, um, oh, and it, light therapies and the use of shungite. And I need to point out that I got full use of the leg back. And there's something to be said for shungite. In fact, um, on the website, we are going to start selling shungite bracelets. So um, if you want one, these are awesome, very well priced. Shoot me an email at pazlumi at gmail.com and I'll make sure you get one. Um, and I'll pick up the shipping if you're a listener. But uh, yeah, those I've got to add those into the website somewhere. I don't know where. But anyway, if you want one, if you want a Shungite bracelet, email me, P-A-Z-L-U-M-I at gmail.com. I'll make sure you get one at a smoking deal and pick up shipping. But yeah, the leg got better. Uh, I didn't have any more issues. But the reality of the consequences of some of these interactions with high strangeness became very evident. We see the same thing with what they're calling interference syndrome. At least that's what the, the CIA doctor who has had stuff leaked out of his office, uh, whether purposefully or not. But anyway, information coming off the desk of a CIA doctor having to do with interference syndrome has pinpointed that this is something very real. In fact, insurance companies are, you know, having special codes made for claims by government employees who are interacting with some of this high strangeness. It's a very real thing. Anyway attachments, hitchhikers, interference syndrome. Don't be unprepared when you go into these areas investigating if that's something you do. And speaking of something you should do, you should definitely head on over to heroparanormal.com. There's a ton of content over there. You're missing it if you're not going over there. Also, do me the solid to like, share, and subscribe to the podcast if you're listening via YouTube. I will most likely never be monetized for a variety of reasons, including the topics I cover and the truth. But if you like, share, and subscribe, it'll help me break through the algorithm of control. The shadow ban is real. And if you'd like to support the podcast with an amazing product that my wife invented, formulated, and brought to market, it's known as Spice Natural Bronze, uh, you can access... What it looks like, go over to happinessmedical.com and you can see the first organic bronzing lotion that's hydrating with coconut oil infused with organic coconut oil and aloe vera for maximum hydration. It's an amazing product, Spice Natural Bronze. It will keep your skin hydrated and moisturized throughout the winter months, keeping it from getting crackly gray and gross while maintaining that color from the summer. Tan like your life depends on it, because it does. Again, amazing stuff. Uh, you can get vitamins, minerals, and supplements there on the site as well. And uh, yeah, until next time, keep your eyes to the skies, feet on the ground, 
but don't forget to take a look around. Come blast off in my time machine. Third eye feeling like an e Vizine. Blast off, blast off, blast off, blast off. Come blast off in my time machine. Third eye feeling like an e Vizine.